What's up everybody, Cigar Shipper Laird Mayhew back with another cigar review and today I've got the Le Grand Lave Connecticut in Churchill. Stay tuned. I can smoke Stogies in my house, first of all, because her father introduced me to Stogies and second of all, because I'm a stud. I'm ballsy. I don't take no shit from anyone. I smoke my Stogie anywhere I want. I don't have to find a hideout place like you. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. Welcome back. Welcome back to another installment here at Cigar Sherpa. Of course, I'm your host, Laird Mayhew, and if this is your first time here, make sure you don't leave here without hitting that subscribe button. And if this is not your first time here, welcome back. Oh, man, anybody tired of seeing my face yet? I figured I kept getting messages from people like, oh, you're not putting out the videos. When are you going to put out the videos? So this week, I just was going to put out like two. And then just, hey, as long as I got the time and I got cigars, and I got time to enjoy those cigars, I'm gonna do a review. So, you know that if I'm not putting out a review that I'm probably busy. Not because I don't wanna be here. Anyway, as my intro said, I've got the Le Grand Lave Connecticut Churchill. Um, this is a cigar by AJ Fernandez. Um, I'm not sure about the origins of the brand, when it was created, if it was, you know, if it's another brand that they sent to AJ for like a special edition. I don't know. I got this thing in the uh, cigar international cigars international monthly sampler along with the one that i reviewed yesterday oh, damn which one was that yesterday man they're all starting to run together the sancho panza okay um the double maduro i remember it now not a bad cigar uh this one is a from what i could read not a whole lot of information on this no one's done a review on it as far as a video review that i could find and i found a few everything i could find was all on for sale sites so maybe it's a catalog brand um, but there was one in 2016, there was a release, the, uh, the Grand Lave, uh, it had a Mexican San Andreas wrapper on it. This one's got a beautiful, waxy, Ecuadorian, Connecticut, shade grown wrapper, along with the Habano binder. I'm going to guess it's from Nicaragua, could be from Ecuador, I don't know, it doesn't say, but the fillers are from AJ Fernandez there in, uh, Nicaragua. Interesting smells coming off this thing. Um, the, the the main body, the wrapper, is, is kind of like a barnyardy woodsy mix. Okay? But off the foot, I mean, you think it's going to be like this very light-bodied... No, it smells like a Connecticut cigar. You know, it's very light, woodsy, barnyardy. And you get to the foot here, and it becomes like, like a cocoa, like a peppery cocoa in a sweetness. So... Um, yeah. Construction on this thing is great. <laughs> I mean, I, I, it's a $10 cigar, so this is not a cheap cigar. This is a, a premium, premium cigar. $10, you know, that's that that's above eight. Normally when I get above $8, I start thinking the cigar, it better be good, okay? Below eight, eh, okay. But uh, the consistency on this thing, the wrapper is, is I mean, it's tight, visible seams. Looks like it's got a double cap on it, but uh, just well made. It's, it's not soft, it's not hard, it's just perfect. It's got the perfect weight. And uh, I'm gonna light this thing up and come back and tell you what I think about it, stay tuned. All right, all right, all right. With this one here, Connecticut wrappers, Candela wrappers, I, I always like to, if I can, if I'm not driving, just go ahead and hold that flame about three to four inches away from the foot and just kind of let it let itself, light itself. That way I don't get any kind of wrapper scorching, which I did. I got a little bit there, but not too bad. Anyway, let's see about this cigar. Light pepper on the retrohale. Maybe green pepper. Not quite white pepper. Ah, maybe like a green pepper. It's got a nuttiness to it right off the bat. And cedar. Peppery cedar. Well, it's getting a little sweeter there. Okay. So, right off the bat, it's what I expected out of a good premium Connecticut cigar. It's cedary. It's got a light pepper, so I'm gonna say green pepper. 
and it's got a nuttiness to it. I don't know what kind of nuts. I don't really taste like cashews or anything like that. It just kind of tastes like a roasted nutty uh, nuance. And it's starting to get a little sweeter. I'm not quite there yet. Hmm. The pepper on this thing is actually, it's actually pretty good. Like it's really mellow, but it's there. It lingers, it doesn't really burn you. And it doesn't, it's, it's like, that, if you ever had green pepper, it's like a, just a lighter version of black pepper. But it's got like a nice little linger to it. A little dry on the palate so far, but I'm gonna get into the first third. Come back and tell you what I think about it from there. Stay tuned. All right, all right, all right. We are well into the first third. It's burning really good. It, you know, it was burning really good. And then about a minute ago, it started to kind of go a little bit wonky there. But ash is nice and tight. It's burning. It's draw. Draw is really good. The flavor on this thing is interesting. Um, I'm liking it. It's got a, uh, of course, it still has the green pepper is kind of gone. It's just kind of shifted to like a, a good black pepper. And the strength of the cigar is like a little stronger than I thought it would be. It's kind of getting me in the back of the throat and the retro hell, retro hell and the crap out of it because it's a Connecticut cigar. I mean, it's, it's light bodied. It really is light bodied on the flavor, but the strength is probably more medium. Uh, the cedar might, you know, some of y'all might, might get, uh, get oak instead of cedar. I'm kind of in between. Is it oak? Is it cedar? So it's woodsy. Um, it is slightly nutty because it's a little dry on the palate. And there is a hint of vanilla and like a graham crackery taste in the background and it's it's developing I, I probably if i had to guess by the second third we might have a little bit more of that pronounced sweetness but uh good mellow smoke uh so far today what what time is it it is three o'clock uh p.m on the east coast here and so far this morning i had to get up early and go to my kids' baseball game, we place travel ball, so we had to go out of town. So we were up at five o'clock this morning, so I smoked an Afrique by Monte Cristo on the way up, and then on the way down, I smoked a Nub Cameroon. Uh, the, the, of course, the Afrique, great cigar. The Nub Cameroon, not bad. A little small. You know, I don't like my cigars. I typically don't smoke a Churchill, but I don't like them three inches either. I like about a five inch, five to six. Uh, I see, this is a seven, so I'm gonna be sitting here for a minute, but I'm gonna come back in the second, third, tell you what I think about it from there, so stay tuned. All right, all right, all right. We are in the second third of this cigar, just about right at the halfway point, and it's burning beautiful. The draw is great. The construction is great. Um, the, the wrapper is unique to me, anyway. Um, it's like a waxy Connecticut Shade wrapper. Connecticut Shade wrappers have a tendency sometimes to be a little dry and uh, like toothy, almost like fuzzy, like like a paper bag, like a, like a sack lunch paper bag. Um, or they can be oily too, but this one is like in between. It's like a waxy and it feels really good in the mouth. It burns really nice. And this mild cigar, I wouldn't even say mild to medium, it's mild. It's got some good medium body flavors, but overall it's a mild cigar. I can see it pairing great with like a cup of light coffee. If you like cream in your coffee, even if you like your coffee sweetened. Um, but even with black coffee, it would be good. But I just kind of imagine like a small little like uh, cafe Americano or Frappuccino, something like that. But um, much of the same flavors that I got in the first third. Um, going into the second third, some leather showed up, took the front stage, and it's kind of stayed there. So along with that uh, slightly pepper, that, you know, that's that green pepper, just a slight pepper taste. Um, we got some like vanilla, graham cracker creaminess kind of came in it sweetened up a bit the the sweetness kind of became like a uh, is now kind of like a like a cane sugar and i'm starting to pick up a little bit of spice like almost like a good cinnamon bacon spice just there in the background so that's probably hopefully that's going to develop because that would be that would be good um and it's still woodsy. I don't know if it's cedar or if it's oak, but it's woodsy. And it's just, it's enjoyable. You know, it's nothing, I'm not, it's not throwing my socks, you know, what you knocking my socks off or throwing my hair back or nothing like that. But it's, it's a very good, uh, mellow cigar. Um, so I thought I would give you guys a little bit of industry news to make it seem like I'm like more important than I really am. Cause you know, nobody tells me shit. I just look it up and read it. But uh, here's some cigars that are coming out. They, they may are, have already landed in your shop, depending on where you're at. If not, they're on the way. And if they're not, and they sound interesting, maybe you just tell your tobacconist if they plan on ordering them. So HBC Cigars, uh, they've got a Hot Cakes. It's called Hot Cakes coming out. Um, Aganorsa Leaf Fillers, 
Um, interesting. I, I didn't memorize exactly what it had, but it, you know, it, it looked like a, a, a from what I read in the picture of it and everything, it looks like something that I want to try. Um, Camacho never had a bad cigar from Camacho. Um, they have a good Connecticut cigar. It's very light. Uh, I really like the um, Ecuador and the uh, the Corojo and the C Candela. It's probably my favorite Candela out of all the. I'm not a big fan of Candelas. But if I'm going to smoke a Candela, I'm going to pick the Camacho. They've got a Nicaraguan blend coming out. So I'll definitely pick that up and, and, and look forward to trying it. Um, Onyx, they have a uh, bold Nicaraguan blend coming out. I mean, Nicaraguan tobacco is already bold, so interesting. Picture that I saw of it, looked like it had the Scarrow wrapper again. I didn't memorize it. Maybe I should have wrote it down, but I'm just letting you know. Do, do with this information as you will. And Alec and Bradley, not to be confused with Alec Bradley. These are the two sons that Alec Bradley was named after. They started their own line of cigars in 2018. I did the review on the Blind Faith. It was a good cigar. They've got one coming out called the Kintsugi. Um, it's, it uses two binders, a uh, Habano wrapper and Nicaraguan filler. So be on the lookout for those. Um, I know I will be, and if I can get my hands on them and uh, timing's right, I'll do a review. So I'm gonna get into the uh, final third of this cigar and come back to Taylor and think about it from there. Stay tuned. All right, all right, all right. We're in the final third, just at the end where I can't hardly even hold it anymore. Smoke's getting a little hot. So I'm gonna go ahead and end the review here, which, I mean, it's fitting because it's about less than an inch left. Um, overall, good cigar. Flavor notes really didn't change. I got the, uh, as far as that only thing that changed was that leather that came in and kind of took the forefront as it got shorter past the uh, You know, probably I don't know probably about five minutes ago. I'm about an hour and 20 minutes into this cigar um, That leather kind of takes the forefront and wipes everything else out and it gets kind of like dry woody tasting on the palate but I mean, it's a very light cigar uh, medium medium bodied light strength um, so overall not bad uh, for a Connecticut cigar. So if you're in the mood for a Connecticut cigar, then um, I would say that these are not like a daily arsenal because I think this is a $10 cigar. So you've got to look look at spending $190 to $200 or more for a box. But if Connecticut cigars are your thing, uh, put this on the list. It did, it did kind of pick up a little bit of that spiciness, that baker spice there, like midway through. It didn't last very long. Got me kind of excited and then it kind of went away. That leather just came in and, and, and took it out. But Again, it's not something I would probably buy. Um, I probably wouldn't have picked it up um, buying it. Uh, it came in the sampler. It was, you know, it wasn't free, but you know, it's part of the, what you pay for when you get a sampler. You don't know what's coming. So, uh, I'm, you know, I'm glad I smoked it. It, it, just, it was fitting for the time of day for what I felt like. I didn't feel like smoking something that was going to blow me away. It's kind of hot outside, and this one just went very nice with, you know, I, I made it took three sips of my Dr Pepper, and it went good with it. I don't know. Some people have different opinions on what you're supposed to drink. I know guys are like, oh, you only to drink water or bourbon. Drink whatever the hell you want. Um, some things will affect the flavor. I know coffee will, but I like coffee with my cigars. Um, I drink Dr. Pepper with them. I take a little sip of it because it, to me, it, it just kind of, the, the flavors just coexist. The flavors of the cigars that I typically smoke in the Dr. Pepper, it just kind of cleans my palate out, kind of gets that charriness out of my mouth and leaves me with a nice, refreshing taste. This has been the Agon, not Agon Orson. This is the Le Grand Lave, uh, Connecticut. Okay, uh, Ecuadorian sun grow, uh, shade grown Connecticut wrapper, Habano Nicaraguan binder with uh, Nicaraguan fillers. It's seven inches by 50 ring gauge. Classic Churchill size. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more videos. Cigar Sherpa Laird may he remind everyone to be polite to everybody that they meet, but always have a backup plan in case you have to shoot them in the face. And I'm out.